going to mug me. I might get a mug you. It's that gorgeous one, eh? And I believe I can run the Chief of Marathon. Download Veely now. Does your kitchen make you feel like this? The countertops are the color of cat barf. That kind of speaks for itself. The space was not designed for aesthetics. Just wasn't what our client wanted. We want to make it ours. Looking to go from ramshackle rural to cool country? We're going to show you how, right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. You may know that I love the country. I can't ride right behind the marriage truck. That's true. No. <laughs> well, most of it. So when my old school friend Stephanie asked me to help create a country kitchen for her and her family, I jumped at the chance. Charming. It's a fantastic 1902 stone farmhouse. But the kitchen has betrayed its heritage. <laughs> the countertops are the color of cat barf, and the walls are burgundy and lime green. I think that kind of speaks for itself. We want to make it ours. We don't want to live with someone else. Is this my color? I would say that color wouldn't even look good on an actual lime. I feel like I'm in Margaritaville and not in the bucolic countryside that we've driven through. I want it to be a modern interpretation of what a great working farmhouse kitchen should be. Not enough storage. It's not laid out right. In fact, there's a dance floor in the middle. Would you like to pirouette for me? Your magic triangle is so far apart. The appliances are There is no magic in this triangle. It's a real mashup. A little of this and a pinch of that is really good when you're making a meal, but it's not so good when you're designing a kitchen. Yeah. We can make much better use of this space. In fact, there's even room for an island. So it's not all bad news. We don't have to pull up the floors. We don't have to get rid of the trim because we've got some good bones to work with. We just yeah. need to strip off anything that's been added cosmetically and usher in a whole new fresh country breeze. And we'll do it by modernizing this farm kitchen while keeping the country charm. Choose a monochromatic palette, rework the layout to increase storage and flow, and do it all with cost-effective off-the-shelf cabinetry. Are you feeling challenged or inspired? I'm feeling pretty inspired. And inspiration surrounds us with wide open skies and agricultural elements. We don't want this to be the classic country kitchen. Neither does Stephanie. No country kitsch. You know, lined up rubber boots at the door is totally part of you, but don't do it in my house. I think she would like something that is way more contemporary. How do you see that coming together? You take materials that have some sort of a thread that leads you back to country, like barn right. board. I think that we could probably execute the kitchen with really clean lines, but using this kind of very country looking texture. Did you ever think we'd be accessorizing with barn board? No, and I think we're gonna have to juxtapose it against something that's quite light and fresh. Unlike Sarah, I'm a bit afraid of color. Color and pattern, and especially colored pattern. I think it would be cool to have a white kitchen that felt warm. Right, the warm and the cool. Right. How about you pick up your speed, Grandma? I'm anxious to get shopping for this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Before anything, we need to get rid of what's there. The old cabinets are in good shape, but they're just not going to work with what I'm planning. So we're donating them to those who can use them. OK, now we're finally going somewhere. Speaking of recycling, if you want to create a space that has no color, you need to derive some interest somewhere. We've got the gray board. Yeah. So it's got that weather patina because it's been exposed to sun and rain. I need something that looks and feels at home in the country. Barn board is going to allow us to do that. This wood is coming from a salvage company that denails and kiln dries recycled barn board. So it's safe and prepped for interior application. And get this, you can hand pick your boards. For the control freak and all of you, you get to pick your own <laughs> boards. I just think this is a beautiful board. It is. I think this is a bit brown for you. That's a bit brown. I'm OK with this. It has a little bit of a knot hole, but it doesn't go all the way through. For all you city folk, this is how you do it. Yeah. I can't wait to show you what we've got in mind. To balance out the more rugged elements we're using, we're looking for stainless appliances. It's cool in here. Have you ever seen this? That's so I can't stick you in here and close the lid and go, exactly. I don't know where Tommy went. Exactly. 
On second thought, I may need his critical eye in choosing an all-important cooktop because there's a hitch. Well, I would do a gas cooktop in stainless, but apparently she's afraid she's going to blow herself up. <laughs> well, I don't really know anything about electric, so I'm going to find somebody. Hold on, I'll be back. I don't know. I cook on gas. That's good, because I don't cook at all. What can you tell me about an electric cooktop? Okay, well, there's two different types. Ribbon element, which this is, or what they call radiant heat, and then there is induction, which is even faster than gas. No. Yes. Induction works on electromagnetics. Underneath the cooktop, there is an actual copper coil, and it goes at an extremely high speed, and it's making the particles in the actual metal in the pots vibrate and create friction, and that's what's creating the heat. And literally, when you take the pot off, you can wipe down the glass, and you'll feel no residual heat at all. Are you in? Well. Based on looks, yes. Based on that whole high school science class we just had, I don't understand any of that. Let's go for it. Thank you. You're welcome. We need a place for all this stuff to go. I'm thinking put the fridge here, ovens here, and cooktop here in between. Lots of storage, and relocate the sink to an island. Tons of prep space and great flow. To get all this on a budget, we're buying it out of the box. I don't think we want a faux beadboard. No. We want to use solid materials wherever right. possible. So we can... This whitewashed solid wood door profile with its hint of grain is right on with our updated country vibe. I don't see using dark wood. No to the sheen, no to the wood, too dark, no. No, 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 no. Hi. It's this one. Hit little it. gray, little white. For my old friend Stephanie and her family, we're taking this kitchen from Grand Ole Opry to New Country. Heat's on. I can't disappoint. When you're designing for a friend, if you don't get it right, you look like kind of an idiot. Have a little faith. To make this country kitchen into Stephanie's dream come true, we're giving it a modern look and new layout with a neutral color scheme. Unlike Sarah, I'm a bit afraid of color. Let's hope she's not afraid of dining tables, because we need one for the eating area. Are you a fan of this table? I think it's a great table. Look at it. This round table offers lots of seating, but it might be a bit too expensive for our budget. I'm not sure that it's the one. But we have this as backup. Backup. Is this an option? I don't know. It just feels a little bit heavy to me. Ow! Chest a flesh wound. But where's Tommy taking me now? You're not scared. No, I'm not scared. You don't get scared. I'm not scared. scared of nothing. Look at this great table base. What if this were Steph's round table base for her kitchen? Oh. And we just did a big top on it. Here's where Tommy's height is an advantage. He's spotting all the bargains <laughs> at the lower level. So Tommy's off to see what kind of bargain this table really is. The suspense is killing me. 375. He has the top. It's 54 inches. We got a table. That's not all. Back at the farm, work is plowing along. The drywall is going up, but we've discovered an alarming lack of insulation. So that's being remedied. Also, the lighting plan is being set in motion. You need great task lighting in a kitchen, and a series of 10 pot lights will get that job done, providing overall illumination. For Above the Island, Tommy and design team member Allie are looking for character and charm. What about these? Those are nice. Has the right vintage and industrial vibe. Oh my god. Tommy? Yeah? I think I found it. <laughs> so this has six bulbs. Our island is 36 by 112. So that's 33. Oh my god, it's 106. How perfect is that? This is exactly the vintage hit that we need in there. Price check! Oh my god. The price is right, $400. Continuing on the theme of light, we're having the dark wood trim painted white to brighten the room and still show architectural interest. And here's a tip. Solid wood plantation shutters are expensive, so we're going to keep these, but we need them to go from dark brown to bright white. We're going to send them to a spray booth so they can be professionally done and professionally finished. There are a lot of moving parts on these things, and if you don't do it right, you end up with a gummy, textured surface, and that's not what you want. And speaking of surfaces, the flooring needs to be replaced where the pantry formerly was. But rather than waste time trying to match the old stain, we're freshening it up and refinishing the entire floor for a consistent look. 
Auctions are a fun and exciting way of finding character pieces at bargain prices. I've got my eye on these four patio chairs. $300 on the table and chairs. Here's the thing, it's a patio set. Because we're trying to create a more relaxed, rugged feel in the country, we're taking barn board and bringing it into our cabinetry, and we're taking the outdoor furniture and bringing it into our seating area. 100 now, 475 is bid asking 500. Sold, 475, e It's a great feeling, and so is this. The kitchen cabinets are being installed. Time for a little look-see. Oh, hello, Primer. <laughs> nice intro. This looks great. But this is terrific use of this wall because it keeps it nice and tight. Even after our island gets built out a bit, we'll still have good clearance through here. It's bye bye to the dance floor. Yeah, amazing surfaces we're going to have. So, is this where we're putting the barn board? Yeah, so we'll clad all around the edges. Brilliant. All right, let's get working on this island. The barn board will stay natural, but I'd like the trim to be gray. Finding the perfect complement isn't easy. So what have we got here? We have eight hours of my night last night. Was this was this late in tonight? Because now it looks like you've actually just like fallen asleep <laughs> on the Is there still some left on my face? Yeah, there is. So how about we just dump the sun bleached into the dark? Let's do her. OK, so let's just give that a stir. I don't mind that. There. That's too brown. That's too light. There, we're done. So now I just need to stain them. This will look great. I'm not sure about the old boards. For some people, letting go is a dream. For her, it's a nightmare. She's going to have to trust her BFF. In today's design adventure, we're showing you how to turn yesterday's farm kitchen into a practical modern space, but still have it look like it belongs in the country. How are we doing so far? Old wood, it's definitely old. I'm not sure about the old boards. Please, I thought she would love the barn board. It's gray. Steph likes white. White's good, there's nothing wrong with white. I know Sarah and she sprays everything, so I really hope they stay white. Nope, not spraying anything. Here we go. Take the plunge. I know, that's why I'm wearing the protective gloves. A little painting never hurt anyone. What I like about it is it'll provide a nice contrast. You don't want it to look like barn board. Oh, quality control. That's nice, huh? Well, it's not a perfect match. It can't be. There's like six different colors in that barn board. I'm just saying. <laughs> the great thing here is that the wood grain's going to show through. Now, time to cut. But I don't think the boys should have all the fun. It's really not good for your hairdo. The gray end posts and trim will provide a crisp, modern contrast to the weathered barn board. What you can see is that we are going with a herringbone pattern. And we're using barn board that's different thicknesses. What I don't want to see is this sort of rough edge, because I think that'll make it look messy. By putting these vertical dividers in, it contains the panel and allows us to get a beautiful, crisp fit with every single board. I've known Stephanie for a long time, and I know she'd never go for a heavy, dark counter. A little bit ugly, kind of. She's also not a fan of granite. So Allie's on the hunt for natural stone that's light and airy. I know, sounds like a contradiction. Let's see how she does. Hi. So I've sent you a bunch of options. OK. This one has a nice, light color and pattern, but too much veining. Too light on one side and dark on the other. And this one? No. Right? Right. We like the looks of option one, if we can have the veinier part at the top. Option one is definitely my favorite. Go with no. your favorite. I'd love to talk, but the sun is setting, and I got an island to finish. Cool. Bye. A few days later, and the Calicutta marble for the island is being cut to size. But it's pricey, and to save some cash, we're opting for a gray composite counter for the other prep surfaces. It's a nice contrast of color and material to reinforce the modern country vibe. Grain white, I like. Now to settle on a backsplash that won't break the bank. We're going straight to ceramics. Okay. Where's the cheapest one? Point to it. Well, the cheapest is the most, <laughs> yeah. They're all inexpensive. Maybe we could use the classic bevel and get a crackle. We make it more interesting. Yeah, let's do a darker grout to frame it all up yes. in a pattern. Okay. And gray grout, pick one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think we're in here. Yeah? Contrasting gray will highlight the herringbone pattern and take this backsplash up market. 
but all those hard surfaces need softening with fabric. The curtains were a bit of a surprise find. This looks like a dandelion. It certainly has an organic feel. I mean, we're trying to do modern country. This is one of those fabrics that could go either way. That's an unequivocal, I don't know. That's a definite, not sure. But for $5.99 a yard, we can't pass it up. I'm sure about pinstripe for the auction house patio chairs. All in, they'll cost $250 each and be totally distinctive. Trying to figure out how much we've spent on our renovation so far. Ah, looks like we can still afford some interesting architectural details. But you know what she said in the beginning. No country kitsch. Well, I may be pushing it now. You're all paranoid that she's going to think that everything you buy is a knickknack now. Come on, you think it's cute, don't you? Because it's in a very depressing shade of dark gray. Which is your favorite color. There's depressing, and then there's depressing. The countertop was installed this morning. The back of the dishwasher fits perfectly, and the front is the issue. It's rubbing on the sides. Our dishwasher won't fit in the cavity. Apparently, the back fits perfectly, and the front is like a quarter of an inch too small. You could shave down the sides a little bit on either end, and the door should close perfectly. I think this whole tail is a little twisted, if you're asking me, but. Time will tell. The next morning, we're up early, and luckily, with some adjustments to the cabinet, the dishwasher slips right in, just in time for us to arrive. This looks incredible. Allie, good choice on the slab. Tile backsplash looks remarkable. The bevel really emphasizes the herringbone, right? It does. And with the installation of the incredible six-bulb island light, uh, Amazing find, you guys. This kitchen is almost there. There's a cool modern color scheme, practical layout, and nods to the country. Next, we pull it all together. Well, almost. They've just delivered a table to me in an entirely different color. My friend Stephanie's dream to have a country house didn't include this dated kitchen. So we've tried to give her what she wants. I want it to be a modern interpretation of what a great working farmhouse kitchen should be. Now we're ready to roll it out. But what the heck is that? Someone's got some explaining to do. They've just delivered a table to me that's in an entirely different color. You can strip it back. We'll get it back to you as soon as we can. Thanks, Gregory. Well, we I didn't ask them to put anything on the base at we all. We just painted out all of the trim that was this color. The last thing I want is a table this color. What I loved about this table when we found it was how raw and rustic and rugged it looked. And what we're looking for now is not a refinisher, we're looking for an unfinisher. Probably about five hours till it comes back. And when it gets back here, I'm gonna finish it myself. In the meantime, we have a kitchen to pull together and oh, how fantastic it looks. The transformation of this kitchen almost leaves me speechless. I've got a little bit of kitchen envy. Sarah and I have known each other for a long time, and I trusted my dream kitchen to her. And it could have gone either way, but she did not disappoint. We had some color issues to deal with, some flow issues to deal with. We certainly had a floor plan that needed to be reimagined. And what we have now is a kitchen that looks really great, that works really well. It'll be a gathering point for us, um, and it'll be a place where we spend a lot of time. Our kids have already sort of grabbed their stools and plopped up to the island and sort of staked that as their claim, and it's perfect for us. For me, it's about the palette, the texture, the use of unusual materials, the found elements, dress it in cream and charcoal, and wow. The colors of, of stone and the colors of sort of the gray barn board it really feels right in the space. This was not a place to go all out mod. It needed to have some traditional elements so that it felt that it belonged in this house. It also needed to have a monochromatic palette in order to belong to this owner because she doesn't like color. It's totally me. First of all, it's black and white. <laughs> An island is generally going to appear as a large monolith in the middle of the room. I'm always trying to make sure that every island offers the maximum functionality and also looks as unique and interesting as possible. 
It houses the sink, the dishwasher, lots of storage, and seating. It does a lot. When you guys showed me barn board early on, I wasn't really sure. I was worried that it was gonna go down that sort of kitschy country fake roosters route. And uh, it didn't. This kitchen could be in any house or apartment in the city, but the barn board really reminds you of your surroundings. We definitely wanted to have those country cues and those visual references, but they're not roosters. The table started out as a diamond in the rough. It was a treasure, it was a deal, and I loved it in its existing condition. All of a sudden, it arrived shiny and brown. That was not in the plan. Not fun. Thanks to some white stain, a little bit of elbow grease, and not listening to my good friend Tommy. You think I'm gonna wreck it, don't you? Kinda. We finally arrived with a table that looks perfectly suited to the space where it sits. Tommy and I are a great pair, but we don't always agree. I'm not into the rug. I kind of like that it feels smoky and cozy. Guess what? I lost that one. I love that funny little curio cabinet because it's a thoughtful little surprise that brings the whole space together. It's my housewarming gift to them. So is it nice that it's their favorite thing? Yep. I could not be happier with this kitchen. It is my dream. It's spectacular. It's everything I'd hoped and more. And now I'm crying on camera. <laughs>《If you and I actually lived together in real life, not you and your husband, that would work out fine. But me on my own, it's this. Uh, you gotta catch it when it's, yeah, it's cat toys. That's a fun door. Uh, that's a fun door.